In this video, we're going to set up the end goal for our level. Now, what this means is we're going to take this little tiny alcove that's right after the fire pit, and I'll turn on the fire pit by clicking real time so you can see kind of where we are. We're going to set up a trigger volume here inside this area. Now this trigger volume's job is just to check and see if the player did indeed pick up all the keys. If they did, then the game's over, they win, they can cheer and go home in victory. If they did not, then they've still got some work to do. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to jump into Kismet. And the first thing I'd like to do is clean up all of these sequence objects for our keys. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt, select all of them, and I'll hold down Shift, Control, and Alt, and grab these strays down here. Now let's tap C, and I'll call this Key Space Pickups without the extra Y in there. So there we go. Now that's nice and neat. Now, what I'd like to do is create a trigger volume right here in this alcove. So I'm going to select any one of these actors. It looks like I got the light right there, and that'll do. And I'm just going to click on the cube button. Now that's only because I haven't been using the cube button for anything else, so it's still set to its defaults, and those will work great. I'll pick this up a little bit. It doesn't have to be flush with the ground at all. As a matter of fact, we may want to move it back a little bit. Just give the player a chance to actually enter this alcove. Not to mention that you're making it just a few units more difficult for them to complete the level. Now, with the brush in position, let's right click and we'll go down to trigger volume and move the builder brush out of the way. Go ahead and select your trigger volume and let's pop into Kismet and I'll right click and let's create a new event using trigger volume whatever number it happens to be and this will be a touch event. Now the first thing we ought to do is set our max trigger count to zero. That's because the player could potentially need to use this multiple times. If they make it all the way here and they didn't have the keys, then they've got to start over. So let's go from here. Now, as soon as they touch this, the very first priority, the first thing we need to do is check and see if they did get all the keys. Well, earlier we created a variable called B has keys. So we can just reach over to that with a comparison. So I'm going to right click new condition, comparison, compare bool, and we'll take the touched output of our trigger volume touch and plug into here. Now, what value are we going to check? We need to make a named variable that reaches over to B has keys. So let's set the var name to B has keys, plug that into the bool. Now, if true, they're going to get a victory screen. If false, they're going to start over. So let's start with true. And here's the cool thing. We set up a very generic end game sequence. All it does is it takes in a UI that we can bring up as kind of a HUD. It fades out the camera, and that's really all there is to it with you know, a little bit of extra stuff. So what we're going to do is grab the exact same sequence that plays the game over screen if they lose too many lives. We're going to copy all that, paste it up here, and connect it to true. So technically, if they won the game, they'd get a game over screen, but it's going to play the wrong sound, too. So let's grab our variable for UI game over. I'll click the magnifying glass button. We're going to set this to UI U1. It's essentially the same UI. It's just got a different message. It says that you actually did win. Now let's come over to the play sound, and currently this plays the game over sound. So again, we'll click the magnifying glass, and we'll set this to Q victory, which is just this. You have won the match. I love hearing that. So with that selected, we'll click the green arrow, and there we go. So already the win scenario is put in. So now we just have to put in the you haven't won yet scenario. We won't call it the fail scenario, although that would be kind of funny. So they get to this point, they cross the threshold, and they don't have all the keys. What do we want to have happen? Well, we're going to bring up another UI that says they need to get some keys. So let's right click, come to new event, and come down to, I'm sorry, not event, excuse me. We're going to go to a new action. Right click, go to new action. I just got carried away. And we're going to open a scene. So false, we'll go to a new scene. And what scene are we going to do? Well, let's close Kismet for a minute, pop into the content browser jump into our UI scenes group 
and we're going to grab UI underscore need keys. All right, so now we can go ahead and close this, go back into Kismet, and plug this into the scene property. So we're going to open up the UI need keys section. Now, after that, what are we going to do? Well, eventually we're going to need to close that scene, but we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Next, we're going to address a very particular problem. And let me just show it to you. Currently, with the level setup that we have, the player does not have the opportunity to make it back up here to get more keys because there's a drop right here that they drop down through, run underneath the level, and then they can jump over. So on the way back, there's no way for them to get back up to that upper level. To solve this, we're going to teleport the player back to the beginning if they fail. So let's right click, go to new action, actor, and come down to teleport. So upon success of opening up that UI, we will teleport the player. So let's right click, go down to new variable, player, player. Make sure you uncheck all players because we're only teleporting player one. And to where would we like to teleport them? Well, if we close Kismet, we can go all the way back to the beginning. And there's a little player start right here. So we'll select that, go back into Kismet, right click, and new object var using player one. Cool. Now all we need to do is close our scene. So I'm going to right click, new action, UI scenes, close scene. So as soon as we teleport, we're going to close up the scene, but that's going to be really instantaneous. It would be like, they'll see a message that says you don't have all the keys. They're immediately going to teleport and then immediately that scene would disappear. So I'm going to put a delay in here right after the teleport. Let's right click, set activate delay to uh, let's say two and a half seconds. Now, we need to tell this close scene action what scene we're closing. So over here in my open scene, I'm going to right click and choose open scene. And we're just going to create a new object variable, which I will then connect over here to the scene. So it's just closing that up. So at this point, we can test this out. Let's go ahead and just jump into the level and see what we get. So the first thing I'm going to do is not get any keys. We'll just run straight through. And see, here's our problem. We fall down here, but there's never going to be a way to get back up. That's why we have the teleport. So we'll jump across, and that hurt a little. Oh, you don't have all the keys, so we teleport back. So now let's try getting all the keys. With however much time we have left. So you can do it, but man, if you if you messed up with all the other obstacles we're going to put in, it'd be hard, but it could probably be done. Okay, now jump across again, and... You have won the match. Excellent. The only thing I might do at this point, just you know, after kind of sitting there and looking at it, is maybe grab that trigger volume and slide it back a little further so it looks like the player can actually reach that goal. So maybe to right about here. And all I'm going to do, just real quick, I'm going to test that just once. So I'm just going to run straight back there to that. And we'll see if it looks like they actually made it to that little swirly, portally ver vortex of awesomeness. And boom. Oh yeah, that looked really good. So yeah, we'll go with that. So that sets up our end goal scenario. So go ahead and save your level and then we will continue from here. This